Hey guys, it's me, Willy Hunter. Nice to have you here. This video will teach you how to build a strong deck in a sealed format. This video is perfect for anybody who wants to increase their skills in building a sealed deck, people who consider to attend some competitive sealed events as a PPTQ, Grand Prix Trials or Grand Prix itself, or just people who want to outsmart their friends during the next pre-release. I don't claim to have the very best guide for building a sealed deck. There are various ways to do it and a lot of programmers have their own style to come up with a strong sealed deck. I try to combine the most effective and, in my eyes, most logical methods and unite them in one video. Although building a powerful sealed deck is really difficult and requires a lot of experience and knowledge, there are some general rules that will make your deck a lot better. I will give you 8 easy steps that will surely help you the next time you're building up a sealed deck. Step 1. Preparations before the sealed event. Make sure to know the set and the cards you're going to play with. I recommend to check the spoilers before you go to the sealed event. Even if it's a pre-release, all spoilers can be found on the official website of Wizards of the Coast. This is important, because you need a quick overview of the cards in the set. This will give you valuable hints in how far the expansion is creature heavy, removal heavy and so on. Also important is the knowledge about combat tricks. For example, is an untapped forest dangerous or are there no combat tricks in the set which cost exactly one green mana? You should be familiar with instants and creatures with flash. If you go for an in-depth analysis of all the new cards of a set before attending a sealed event, you will increase your chances to build a better deck heavily. Let me give you an example. The card Alchemist's Greeting deals 4 damage to a creature for 5 mana. Sorcery Speed. This is terrible. But the card has another effect called Madness. You can play this card for its madness cost anytime you will discard it. If you didn't check the cards before, you might say it is hard to cast this card for its madness costs. But indeed, it is really easy to build a deck in this set which lets you discard some of your hand cards. And this makes Alchemist's Greetings a lot better. Combine it with Olivia's Dragoon or a Noose Constrictor just to name a few. I know this is an obvious example, but the point is go and check the cards so you have a better understanding of which deck archetypes you could possibly play. You can gather infinite information out of the spoilers. Even if you just check the comments and notice that there aren't any combat tricks in the set, this will already have a positive influence on the way you build up your deck. To make it crystal clear, if you go for a competitive sealed event, you have to know every single card of the set. If you attend some pre-releases and play just for fun, it is fine to know the cards partially. Step 2. Open the packs and sort the cards. So the sealed event starts and you get your 6 boosters. Open them up and put all the same colored cards together. Don't rush to build your deck before you opened every booster. You need a good overview of the cards you pulled before making any decisions. While I open the remaining boosters, I will give you some general information about a sealed format. A sealed deck contains at least 40 cards and you want to play exactly 40 cards because the less cards you have in your deck, the higher is the chance to draw your best cards. You can also call them bombs. Bombs are these kind of cards which will possibly win you the game because they give you a great advantage in some way. Most cards considered as bombs are rares or mythics. If you go to a sealed event, you will get 6 boosters of the latest set. If it's the second expansion of a new set, you will get 4 boosters of the latest set, right now it's Eldritch Moon, and 2 boosters of the old set, Shadows over Innistrad right now. You can play as many copies as you want of a single card in your sealed deck. You pull 10 times the same card, no problem, put it into your deck. All of your cards, which you didn't put into your main deck, can be used as sideboard in game 2 and 3. You are absolutely allowed to change your whole deck in game 2 or 3. I don't recommend it, but technically it's allowed. If you attend a competitive sealed event like a Grand Prix trial or a PPTQ, you have to create a deck list including all the cards you play in your main deck. For casual events like a pre-release, you don't need a deck list. There are some more differences between competitive sealed events and casual events, but the steps you should follow to build a strong deck are the same. Step 3. Decide which color you want to play. Alright, so now we have sorted our cards. You should play the colors in which you pulled your best rares and your most playable cards. Cards. At best, your rares and your most playable cards share a color, so your best cards can be easily played in a two-color deck. More often you have to ponder different decks and decide which cards you want to play in any case and which to cut. But how to detect bombs and playables? How to distinguish between good cards and poor cards in general? This is actually the point in Sealed where it turns out whether a player has already a good knowledge of the game and knows what he's doing and a player who doesn't. Detecting good cards and building good synergies has a lot to do with experience and practice. But there are some general rules to do this. First, 
Bombs. Bombs are the cards that will win you the game. They will give you a big advantage because of their stats, their abilities or any combination of that. Make sure to play as much bombs as possible. In this pool I pulled the mythic Deploy the Gate Watch. Although this card is a mythic, it's not by any means a bomb. This card is terrible and limited. You will need at least one or two planeswalkers in your pool and even then this card isn't good. This card is dirt. Talia's Lancers, on the other hand, can be considered as a bomb, even without another legendary target in your deck. A 4-4 human body with first strike for 5 mana is a big threat for your opponent. 2. Evasion. Sealed in general world is a creature heavy format. You will win by going the classic game plan to bring your opponent's life points to zero. So you have to deal damage. The best way to do this is playing creatures with evasion. Evasion means abilities like flying, trample, menace, fear, landwalk, skulk and so on. A 2-2 flyer can become really dangerous when it swings continuously every turn. Don't underrate evasion, it's extremely important in limited formats. 3. Removal. Your opponent will surely have some bombs too, so make sure to have some removal in your main deck. You will need some answers for the threats your opponent is throwing at you. The best way to deal with it is removal like Ruthless Disposal, Alchemist Screeting, Murder, Imprison in the Moon and so on. 4. Abilities Keep your eyes open for cards with abilities that will help you in your game plan. Most of the abilities of your cards won't win you the game, but they will bring you surely in a better position. 5. Synergies Also make sure to find synergies and combos among your cards. For example, Ruthless, Disposal and Weird Vampire. Your deck consists just 40 cards and you will probably draw half of them during each game. The odds to draw different combo pieces are not too bad. But beware, don't never create a deck that relies too much on single combo cards. You shouldn't play a card that do little things or mostly nothing for themselves, such as Emrakul's Influence. This card is terrible. Better play cards that are already good but become even better in combination with other cards, such as Markov Crusader. Alright, if you consider all these hints, you will soon be able to distinguish between terrible cards and excellent cards. Let's take a closer look at the cards I opened up in this boosters. Before I start to analyze the card pool, please remember, I'm not a pro gamer. I don't claim to be able to build a perfect deck deck out of this pool. I surely do some mistakes myself. If you felt like I did a mistake in rating some of the cards, let me know in the comments. Let's start with blue. Blue is surely the worst color in my pool. If we remove all the unplayables, we can quickly see the remaining cards will do too little to win the game. There are just a few playables and most of the playables are instants and sorceries. But as mentioned before, we will need damage on the board. But these five creatures won't do the job. Cards like gun missing or press for answers will delay the game of your opponent, but these cards doesn't even trade. You will lose card advantage and losing card advantage results more often into a game loss. So, blue, bye bye. The white cards look a lot better. We do have some really good creatures with evasion and some creatures with great abilities. In addition, we do have some removal like choking restraints or faith unbroken. I prefer to have some more real removal, but cards like Sea Guardian Priest and Stern Constable will also help to deal with enemy creatures. So white gives us a lot of great creatures with good abilities and stats. Black offers some great removal and synergies. Reared Vampire can easily be cast for its madness costs in combination with cards like Olivia's Dragoon, Ruthless Disposal or Crypt Breaker. Well, and this is pure value, but also a lot more unstable. Because Reared Vampire without any discard spells is just a 3-3 body for 4 mana. Horrible. Green supplies us with a lot of powerful creatures with good stats. In addition, cards like Shrill Hola and Ulvenwald Captive are good in the early game but can be transformed or rather ramped into a bigger threat when drawn in the late game. The combo tricks are not really stunning and cards like Emrakul's influence are just terrible. Red offers some more madness cards which would benefit from the black cards in my pool. In addition we got some nice early drops and creatures aiming for the aggro plan. We also have some nice removal and some valuable combo tricks. Since Seal is a creature heavy format, Badlam Revealer won't benefit a lot from his first ability. I don't think it's a good limited card, it is far away from being a bomb. The artifacts and multicolored cards doesn't offer us anything which would make us splash anything. The decision which main colors to play depends on the colored mana cards in the pool. Adding some artifacts to fill some holes is always legit. I will go for a white green human deck because I did pull the best playables in these colors. I will play a lot humans, more than two third of the deck will be humans and cards like Veteran Qatar, Crossroads Consecrator and Repeal the Abominable will grant us some good value. It is also possible to build a red and black madness deck with this pool, but I feel like this deck would be a lot less steady than the green white human deck. Even if we don't have as much removal as we would have with red and black, we do have creatures with better stats, better abilities and more evasion.
So I will go for white green. I am sure you're curious how to go on when building a powerful sealed deck, how much lands you should play and what's the perfect mana curve. I will answer all these questions and a lot more in part 2 of this video. Just click the link. However, tell me about your strategy of building a sealed deck. Did you do it the same way as I showed you in the video or do you find out some special methods that work for you? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video and want me to do more of this, hit the like button and make sure to visit me on Facebook. In diesem Sinne, thank you for watching. I am for now out. See you soon. Bye bye.